here we're going to look at an example. We've got a we've got a back four, and we've got three midfield attacking midfield and forward players here looking to attack the goal. Now, as things stand, they're outnumbered. So if we can shift a player over this side here, we're going to isolate that uh, that left-sided defender, the left fullback. If we can isolate that player, we've got a two versus one situation. At this point, another player is going to have to slide over to support to create an even amount. So as you can see, that situation that we started with, the, the numbers up to two versus one is shut down very quickly and the, the team are allowed to, the team can actually create the, or work the advantage back now so it's on an, on an even keel. At this point, we can look at that space that's created here. If we can get our third man running into this area, we've created a little pocket of space. Now that off the ball run there, if that's taken advantage of quickly, we can play a little diagonal ball in here and we can look to, to work our way in behind. Now that came about because we created an, a smaller, first of all a 2v1 situation, which turned into a 2v2. Then with the third man run, we, we gave ourselves the extra player. We created a three versus two situation. We've got the numerical advantage. We force a superiority in this particular position, and we're now through on goal. Now, if we break that down and we look at the field to begin with, we had four versus three. And that, as it looked, we didn't really stand much of a chance of, of breaking that down. So we really need to see, identify the areas that we can work our, our way in, how we're going to create that to our advantage and then obviously exploit that through the quick passing, quick movement and quick thinking of our players. As you can see relating back, we move the player, the player move the defence and finally we move the ball into that position. Now also a point worth noting here is notice how the defensive pressure gets transferred close to the proximity of the ball. So the immediate threat being the ball, everybody's pushed over this way to create pressure around the ball, limit the space and limit the options. Now, this can be taken advantage of through the quick pass that we've just discussed. Equally, we also have the option to relieve the pressure. So to, to pass backwards, look for a passing option that's in a little bit more space, and from there we can change the point of attack if we need to. So now we're going to look at a session plan which is going to help us develop our triangle passing and our third man runs off the ball, hoping to link up the play, create a numbers up situation and give us an advantage on the field. So this drill here, we can see we've got three cones in a triangle formation. Each cone is about 15 yards from the other, so we're looking at a 15-yard pass. That's going to allow us just to just to work in that space there with each player. We've got seven players per triangle just to keep it uh, keep the activity flowing. Now this is unopposed, so it's just going to be passing with no pressure. We just want the players to be to be linking up to make be making crisp passes, and that is how this is going to be formed. This is going to be the backbone of the of the session itself is is making sure we're making good passes. We're communicating with each other and we're moving off the ball quickly and at the right time. So player one in the start line, as you can see here, is going to be passing counterclockwise up the field. Player two is stood by the cone. Now player two needs to check away. We're going to treat that cone as if it's a defender. So we're going to check away from the cone, create a little bit of space and receive the pass. Now in the interest of passing the way that we're facing, we're going to drop the ball back into the advance in player one. Player one is going to actually follow their pass. Now... It's important that we maybe step off at an angle here so we can open up the field a little bit to what we can see. So player one passes to player two. Player two, first time if they can, makes a little layoff pass back, maybe halfway back towards where player one is advancing. Player one's going to collect that pass now and he's going to make a through pass. So we're going to finish off the triangle. Player three, at the moment, is stood behind player two. They're waiting. This is our numbers up situation now. So we've got the three players in effect. Two players have made a pass and the third man is going to make a run in behind looking for a through pass from the receiving player one who is then, once the ball is passed to player three, they're going to pass down the line to the, to the new player two and the sequence is going to continue from there. Things that, we need to make, uh, things that we need to really focus on here are accurate passes like we said. If we can do one touch passes, this is going to be perfect. So we really, really need to set each other up now with passes that we're going to want to receive. I always ask my players, would, would you have appreciated that pass if you'd received that ball? So take care of your passes. Play a pass that's going to allow that receiving player every chance of playing a good first time ball. And also don't be afraid to stop and start this activity. If we, if we move this very laterally, so if player one passes to player two and follows the direct line of that pass... We're not going to create any angles, so player one, when they pass to player two, 
Can they make a little angled run off to the side? Because they know where they're going to have to play that ball to. The advancing player three. So can they give themselves a better angle to get that ball across first time? Equally, can player three bend their run a little bit so they can see a little bit more of the field? If they run in quite quite narrow, quite a straight run, they might not be able to see the pass coming in and also the field in front of them. So they need to give themselves angles at all time. Maybe even stop it, break it down, exaggerate these. Now, I always encourage coaches to, to ask players where they think they should be stood. And at that point, and this isn't pointing fingers again, this is, can I, can I be stood in a better position? Would I have seen more of the field from here? And then maybe give them both options, run it through. So say, okay, we'll stand here where we started, receive the pass from there. What can you see from here? Okay, let's rerun that. Let's start from here. Now, can you see a little bit more of the field? Would you have preferred to have that pass to here? Can you play that first time from this position? So I would run that for maybe 10 minutes there. Just keep the sequence going, just nice crisp passes. The sequence should flow quite nicely and it should just give the players a lot of time on the ball, um, a lot of repetition of passes, a lot of good angles created and a lot of through balls timed, a lot of good off the ball runs timed there.